Thank you. Thank you so much for the answers. And thank you to provide this, this positive view as well, that there's not everything so dark. And but talking about this, we have the positive. So now what you guys can tell us about what is the challenges? What is the serious challenges that the seed industry is facing right now? I would like to start with you, Diego, and perhaps go afterwards with Mario and finish with Andy, please. Yes. So although we have been saying that everything uh, seems to keep operating and it's uh, in good shape, we have identified some delays on some specific processes. But those delays, once detected, we have been able to uh, find solutions to most of them. Um, workforce availability. Uh, I think that's a big issue most of our members highlighted. So, field seasonal workers and uh, the movement of those workers. So, it's people trying to take care of themselves and their families, so they want to stay at home, but also those that are willing to go for work are having some difficulties to move because public transportation is uh, uh, suffering uh, in, in some ways. Uh, also, in some countries, uh, when delivering seeds, when trying to move seeds internally, or some trucks have been uh, stopped by local people trying to avoid the virus to be spread. Uh, but once um, we explain that we are carrying seeds, and they immediately understand and that is incredible that because it has happened in in some countries uh transportation trucks availability is something that um we are all seems uh, we are also struggling a little bit but i also would like to mention research and development uh, and development uh some companies have mentioned that they research and development uh, areas um, are being uh, reshaped, I will say. Um, some projects are suffering some delays and probably will will see the impacts in the near future or in the long term. So we cannot measure today what the impact on research and development could be, but some companies are worried about it. And finally, I will say that a big challenge is on the marketing strategies. Field days, which is something uh, very uh, useful and common for our members to do field days, are not taking place. So it's very important to deliver technologies and to deliver knowledge behind those technologies. So the big challenge is how to change some marketing uh, strategies. Um. I would like to say that that I think that we all agree that, that the main challenge that we have as an industry uh, is, is to, to keep supplying high quality seed to the world, to the world's agriculture. That's absolutely critical. Uh, and certainly this will involve um, a productive logistical and regulatory efforts uh, more than ever, more than ever. Uh, Today, uh, we cannot allow any lack of seed to the world and, and to the people from the, of the world. Um, we, I, think, I think we are far from overcoming the problem. That we, we should be realistic about this. In, in, in the Southern Hemisphere, uh, we are just in beginning autumn. So we, are, we, we, will, we will face uh, some, some month uh, working under restricted conditions. And um, finally, I would like to say that uh, one of the main things uh, during all this process is that we have learned to work uh, with, with a lot of more efficiency than we, we used to, to, to have. Uh, national seed associations, uh, our authorities, the companies, of course, uh, our regulators, uh, we have been working very close uh, with a new mind setting and, and one of the main challenges is why we cannot keep this uh, efficient way of working uh, in the next future. I think that's 
really, really uh, one of the main challenges that we uh, have ahead, and it's a really a positive challenge. And I agree, I agree completely with everything that uh, Mario and Diego said. Uh, I think as we look at it, that big challenge is all of our companies and their employees and their colleagues, and even their farmer customers are looking at how do we first uh, make sure that our families are safe, safe and healthy. Secondarily, how do we change the way that we work so that we remain safe and healthy, enabling us to do the job of distributing seed to America's farmers, ranchers, homeowners, and others. And so that's the biggest challenge as everyone gets up in the morning. I think you're looking at a different perspective. So we're trying to figure those out as we go along and do our daily business. At, at this point in the United States, that research, breeding, planting, seed increase are all beginning to happen in preparation for what Mario brought up as our demonstration days and letting farmers come out and look at the crops, look and see what they may want to plant next year, look and see the new varieties that are coming into the market. What does that look like in July and August when we start inviting farmers out, if we can invite them out? And how do they, um, how, how do our companies stay? Is it a three, three sessions a day instead of one main session from eight to five? What does that look like so you have that social distance and, and you begin to be able to move forward? So those are all key. The transportation and labor we hope will work out as we go forward. We've got to count on that. We're working closely with our shipping companies here in the U.S. and our airlines to see what we can do and how they can uh, help to change their processes to enable us to be able to move that seed. Now that we have we talked about the, the positives and the challenges, so what are some of the lessons and best practice that you guys think you can share with others? What have been the lessons learned under the current situation? So I would like to hear first from you, Andy, and then we can go to to Diego, and afterwards we finish with Mario, please. Well, really, as we look at this, uh, we're learning the lessons, but we're not sure what they are yet, to be honest with you. We're really trying to uh, over-communicate with both our team within ASTA and our ASTA staff, but also with out outside of ASTA with our members and then our member customers, who are those in the produce industry or the corn and soybean and wheat industry and cover crops. What are they seeing as issues and how do we make sure that as we go forward and, make, and, and have those lessons documented, how do we make sure that when this happens again or if this happens again, we know how to act, we know what to do next. And um, I think the big, one of the biggest lessons we've learned to date that we've been able to put our fingers on is you can't over communicate in a crisis. And that's what's, what's absolutely key. We can't help our member companies if we don't know where their problems are. We can't help our government overcome an issue that our members are dealing with if we don't know what that government's issues are. So a lot of that um, uh, constant communications, as Mario said, 24 hours a day, seven days a week to make sure that uh, we understand what's going on out there and, and uh, try to get on top of issues as quickly as possible. So for us, I think it's, um, it's a big lesson learned how to be close uh, because no one was waiting for this to happen, but suddenly it happened to all of us at the same time. And, um, and you know, uh, around this situation, it's small, medium sized companies, also national, international, big multinationals and national research institute. So we have a wide range of members that suddenly all of them have the same problem. So I think the one of the big lessons learned is how to share experience and knowledge um, when this kind of things happen. And uh, we as association, we need to serve as a good platform for this uh, communication and also to gather these kind of experiences and uh, also to be a strong, um, a strong channel uh, between the regulatory bodies, the government, and also the seed industry as a whole. So uh, from an association perspective, I will say that uh, the lesson learned is 
we always need to keep building relation, good relation with our members and also with our counterparts, the regulators, uh, not only for a daily communication when everything runs smoothly, but also when this kind of crisis appears. And also, I think we need to learn to prepare contingency plans. And I think so far, most of the seed industry do not have contingency plans. And they have not thinking on putting them in place, I will say, once these appear, because they have been thinking on the short-term decisions. Now they are starting to think on the medium and long-term decisions, and I think contingency for some seed industry parts, it's, uh, it's a word they are now uh, working with. Um, I would like to start in this question, uh, going back again to our people. The success of uh, the seed industry is on their shoulders, of course. So uh, our first, first um, priority uh, always will be our people and uh, their safety. So uh, all sanitation measures that have been implemented uh, must be strongly held in, in uh, forever, I would say. Uh, certainly, I, I agree with Diego and, and, and Andy that communication is critical, absolutely crucial in this moment. Uh, coordination between companies, seed associations, our ministries, ministries of agriculture, the custom service, and, and etc., uh, should be maintained at a very, very high level. Uh, that's, that is now and will be uh, very, very critical in the coming years. And uh, also, I would like to, to say that we think that really that teleworking uh, is here to stay. I'm here in, in, in alone in, in the office, uh, and, and we have learned how to work uh, in, in a remote way. So uh, we really, really must learn how to keep uh, working under these conditions, not just with our members, with uh, our regulators, with our authorities, with everybody, uh, in order not to lose efficiency. Uh, and finally, I, I would like to say, uh, from the perspective of uh, Chile, uh, uh, as a producer of uh, seed in counter season, uh, that we really need to receive the seed on time. Logistics, all we know that will be complicated for some time, uh, as has been said, uh, and we need to receive uh, the seed early. And this is a message uh, for all our partners in the Northern Hemisphere. Thank you so much, everybody. I would like to take this opportunity in the name of the ISF Secretariat for to Mario, to Diego, to Andy for providing to us an insight of what is happening with the seed industry on your particular region and country under the current pandemic. So thank you so much. Thank you, Rose. Thank you, Rose. Thank you.